Clive. First, we'd like to thank you for all the wonderful work you've given to us over the years, and to the team at Seraphin and Century Guild for allowing us a glimpse into your studio. People like Mark, Ben, Eric, Thomas, and everyone else who works over there, they help bring your fantastic creations to the widest audience possible, and they have our thanks. By now, the Scarlet Gospels are out, and the Clive Barker Podcast has reached episode 100 by this point, uh, where we discuss with and interact with other fellow fans about your work. Thank you very much for granting us this interview, and so now, on with the questions. My first question is, once I heard you reminisce in conversation with Rick Clifel from the Agony Column about your Irish paternal grandmother Florence, and the tales she would tell you and your brother Roy, involving colorful characters from Liverpool like uh, spring Hill Jack, as she drank warm Guinness and ate tripe and milk and onions by the open fire. Um, would you say your grandmother's stories played a role in shaping your early love for the fantastic? Second question comes from a fan called David Anderson, and his question is, the one burning question I've had lately is about the Scarlet Gospels. I was wondering why the book is now leaner and meaner than the massive, imagica-sized tome it was at the penultimate stage. Is it because a lengthier stay in the dark hell would be too oppressive? Not that the novel feels short or anything, just wondering if that figured into the final book, and if it's ever painful for you to trim large sections of your own written work. My final question is, Liverpool was described by Carl Jung as a dirty, sooty city, but he also called it the Pool of Life being a port on the mercy full of ships and consequently sailors. I've heard that your paternal grandfather was a sailor and sailed to the Far East. Is it true that he brought back some Japanese puzzle boxes from his travels and that these influenced your ideas for Hellraiser's Lament Configuration Box? Thank you very much for taking the time, Clive. Hello, Mr. Clive Barker. This is Ryan Danhauser. I'm from the Clive Barker podcast and from Occupy Midian. <laughs> <laughs> so... So, uh, this is Joey, by the way. Um, you drew a picture of him uh, the April before he was born, and he actually came out looking pretty close to what you drew. Uh, so anyway, Jose and I were there at the L.A. screening of Nightbreed, and we were cheering you on. Uh, and at that screening, at that premiere, you, you mentioned that uh, seeing the movie restored and seeing the love for the movie after all of those years made you feel tempted to go back to directing movies again. So my question is that we love we all love all your different types of work, uh, but do you miss the collaborative art like uh, plays and movies and stuff? Uh, my next question is uh, we were all proud of the way Occupy Minion turned out, uh, but I I had serious doubts. I think other people had serious doubts about um, whether we could actually get through to the Hollywood system and make something like this happen. So. Um, Knowing uh, that the movie studios can act, will actually listen to this fan demand, um, if you could turn that fan movement, your enthusiasts and readers and all of, you know, like the success of Occupy Midian, if you could turn that towards something else, something different, um, some project that maybe deserved a second chance or was unfairly handled, uh, what would that be? Okay, thank you. Say thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. Hey, Clive. Uh, my name's uh, Rob Rodnauer, and I do news for the Clive Barker Podcast. Uh, I really uh, want to say thanks for taking time out of your busy schedule to uh, answer a few of uh, our questions. Uh, my first question is, uh, I've come to really enjoy your art in the past year, and uh, what I love but what I've come to love most about it is uh, how I feel like I've become a part of uh, a picture or a painting that you've done. Uh, uh, my, I guess my question is, is uh, as an artist, does that make you feel satisfied to know that a person feels absorbed into the, the art that you've done rather than just, you know, uh, you know, a person looking at the painting and saying, oh, that's a good painting. You know, and then just walking by. Uh, my next question is: is uh, I've always, as I've been, I've also been reading a lot of your stuff. Uh, about done with the Magica, read the Great Secret Show, Weep World, uh, uh, Everville, You know, with a Hellbound Heart, of course. And um, I'm curious uh, why it seems like a lot of objects you put a lot of 
magical, uh, uh, there's always, objects have a lot of magical qualities to them, such as, you know, the carpet in the Wee World, the, uh, uh, Shad, or Shadwell's, uh, jacket in the Wee World, uh, of course, the box from a little bit configuration from Hellraiser, I was just curious, is there, what's the fascination with giving objects, you know, this kind of magical quality? So uh, that's it. Uh, those are the couple questions I just wanted to ask. And uh, thanks. Have a good day.